good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, live on location at Theater 68 in North Hollywood for our very special segment of our show entitled Keeping Our Dream Alive. This is an exciting show. I'm so excited uh, this afternoon. I hope you all are excited as well because we're broadcasting live on Facebook. And also, um, we're also at WCOBM.TV. We have three very, very special guests this afternoon um, coming on the show to talk about their careers. This is a musical um, professional show this afternoon because all of these people can sing, they're talented, and they are legendary. So I'm Sherrard, and Sherrard Show is sponsored this afternoon by the Sherrard Show Candy Bar. Um, every dollar is, you, you, when you purchase a candy bar today, Every dollar goes back to the Cancer Foundation, so we want to support the uh, Sherrard Show today. And um, our special guest today, um, the young lady on our right, uh, she, when you hear her sound, her sound is absolutely incredible. You thought Adele could sing, but you hear this beautiful young lady. Um, she just has a sultry voice, and she's young, and she's very, very beautiful. Miss Ladina Spence is on the Sherrard Show today. Ladina, welcome. How are you? Hello. Hi. You Thank you for I appreciate you stopping by the show today on this Saturday afternoon. Uh, welcome. So, how are you? I'm very excellent. Good, good. You know, um, a lot of people come on the show, they just look even better in person, and she's one of them. Look even oh, better in person. We appreciate you, you stopping by. <laughs> so, uh, Ladina, you have, um, I was kind of doing a little um, research on you and your bio, and it's very impressive, young lady, to be so young. And it sounds like music has been in your blood since day one. Is that correct? Yes. 100% correct, yes. So tell me a little bit about uh, what inspired you to be uh, this singer that you are. Um, feelings, a lot of, I have so many feelings and such a need to help people. And I feel like music is like a direct, um, a direct path to your soul and to get to you, you know? And I think that you could use that definitely to an advantage and help people out, you know, by writing songs about bullying or making them feel like they're not alone and things like that. So I just, I love the fact that music is so touching and has so much to do and involves with feelings. Your, your, your music is really touching. Um, the first song, um, when I just heard it, I was caught in right away, um, just closing my eyes and it took me somewhere. Um, is that what you're intending to do? Yes. You, you yeah. do that? Yeah. It's very impressive how your music just jumps in there, but your voice is a, is a God-given uh, voice. Now, you, you were speaking about, uh, I was talking um, to someone, I was looking at your bio, I was like, wow, it's so impressive. This young lady, at the age of three, setting up stages and singing and doing all this stuff. Uh, wow. Did your family always feel that you were going to go far in music? Uh, they always supported me, and they always, I think they always, yeah, they always made me feel like I this was for me. I would almost force them to watch a show like every weekend sometimes. <laughs> I would beg them to watch the show. But yeah, I would take it very seriously. You know, I set up the stage, I made the little snack table. I did it very seriously. Yeah, it was fun. And I see you put your um, brothers and sister to work as well, huh? Yeah. Somebody was serving coffee yeah. while other was taking tickets. That's pretty interesting in terms of that. Now, um, I've been forced to watch a lot of things myself. But people weren't that talented. But thank God you are talented you. and you're putting on a wonderful performance. So where are you looking to take it? Um, I want to spread my, I, I really want to pursue the helping aspect of it a lot. I want to I want to be a candidate for standing up against bullying and just all these messages, how racism, like that, you know, we're all pink and squishy, you know, just things like that, you know, morally um, things that we should be going forth and just being supportive towards all these different organizations and child soldiers and things like that. Like, I just really want to represent things like that. And that's really my intention is to do a huge charity kind of a feel with it also. That's quite fascinating because, you know, most people don't realize that music being a universal language, you know, me growing up, there was Curtis Mayfield, there was the Isley Brothers, you know, Bobby Womack. They would sing it to a generation based upon the things that were happening. So oftentimes people give me um, music to listen to, and it's all this blah, blah, rap, rap, and all this, and it's only singing to what's going on in their lives. But you want to just kind of have a universal language to speak about the times. Right, right, like that, exactly. And then, of course, I want to have some feel-good songs, you know, just to let mm -hmm. loose or whatever. But there's a lot of messages that I feel like I can portray and that I want to get out there. Just now, now um, what do people say, typically, when they hear your sound? Um, they say that my voice is soothing, 
people doing that, yeah, mm -hmm. that it's soothing and that um, that it's different, that they haven't really heard something like my music before. If I was robbing a bank, I would want to hear your music in the background. That would make me feel like, you know, they'll give me all the money. No, I'm joking. Yeah. But we're speaking to the wonderful Latina Spence on the Sherrard Show about her career, where it's going. Um, and also, if you want to reach out to her now, you can hit me up at Facebook if you have any questions for her. Or also on Twitter if you have any questions about this beautiful young lady and her career. Now, um, on one of your particular songs um, that, was, that I, I heard, um, I think it was called Free Me. It was one that, um, it was just so beautiful because I was like, this girl is so young, but have you had such experiences? No, I Love You. That was the one about love. Oh, I, I Love You. Yeah, that was one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. tell, me, tell me a little bit about that. Aren't you kind of young when you fall in love? Well, to be quite honest, um, this song was actually inspired by my parents. You know, it's those, those people that you just you love them so much and you just try to express it in any possible way you can. And I was just thinking about like, you know, how much that I would protect them from harm and what I would want to do. And that's why I say in the song that I want to protect them and lock them behind my heart. And, you know, I try to, I just try to get at your heart if I can do that with my lyrics and maybe with the way that I'm singing. And yeah, so it actually wasn't to do with a guy. It was more my parents and my family, how much that I loved them. And I actually wrote this song for Christmas for them when I was like 13, somewhere around So, there. so you write your own music? Yes. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. So what, what's inspired you or what inspires you to write your own music? You look at things going on in the world and you turn around and just want to start writing? Yeah, exactly. So like things, you know, events that are happening or somebody, you know, I wrote a song about a girl who actually took her life because of bullying. What's the title? Katie. Because her name was Katie, and even her family, you know, they reached out to me, thanking me for this, and um, yeah. So I was on Facebook, and I just it hit me, like I, it just it hurt, it hit me, and I tried to use that, and I tried to, you know, portray it and transfer what I was feeling into a song, and that's when the best things come out because your heart gets involved. So anything that touches me, you know, if I see child soldiers or something like that, where it hits me, or I think it's so long, I have so much to say about it, and I want to try to. Put it into a song. I want you to write a song about the Cubs winning the World Series. Uh, my cameraman, he's a, he's a Cubs fan too. So I want us to, uh, I want you to write one when they win a Cubs the World Series. I want you to write one about that, okay? I'm just going to make this off. I will. But now, um, it, it turns out, though, very interesting, is that you come from a musical family. Is that correct? Yes. Your dad is a Grammy um, um, award winning um, producer. And uh, he has a wonderful accent. I just love talking to him. He's a great guy. He looks like he's one of the Beatles, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. But, he's a, he's a, he, he, but tell me a little bit about how it was having the pressures, or any pressure, of having a Grammy Award winning producer dad. Well, you know, I, I just see it as an advantage. I don't really see the pressure at all. You know, my family is so musical. I was always surrounded Christmases and everything. We're always singing. And, I love, love working with my dad. He totally understands me in the studio. We'll do like 12 hour studio days sometimes, you know, and my stomach's like browning, you know? <laughs> Better do one more set, huh? Yeah, yeah. no, but he's, he's just fantastic. He, he just understands where I'm coming from, the field I'm getting. He knows how to take me to the next level, you know, when I'm not giving my everything or I, I could do more. He always like pushes me to try to achieve more. Wow. And I love that. So. Well, and, and I'm hearing that you have a sister that sings as well, huh? She has a beautiful voice for singing. My sister, yeah, she, she sings, but she's much more into the fashion industry than the singing, but she does enjoy it. A lot of talent <laughs> in that household, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> right here on the Sherrard Show. When we come back, we're going to have her dad, Andrew, stop by the show. And then also we're going to hear about your trip to India, and then we're going to hear some of her beautiful voice in action. I'm Sherrard. We'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, live on location at Theater 68, talking to the lovely Ladina Spence about her career. Fascinating, young, beautiful girl, so much experience. You know, you got to check her album out. She has so many awesome, awesome songs that we're going to talk about um, in a moment. But, you know, Ladina, I'm just so impressed because a lot of times people turn around and just give me their music. And I listen to it one song. I say, yeah, it's not my kind of cup of tea. And then we leave it at that. But I had to hear all your songs. Oh, and it was just so much there um, on your songs, and you're so gifted, and we have to give credit to your dad as well. 
um, who's sitting here um, as well. Andrew, how are you? Very good, Sean. Sure. How are you? I'm good. The coolest accent we're flagging the bridge. Oh, well, thank you. Flagging the bridge invasion, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you just came back from India. Tell me a little bit about why you were in India. Uh, what, see, we went on a kind of spiritual uh, pilgrimage to India, just checking out the uh, temples and the spiritual background of India. It's a kind of a draw for me. Uh, and just seeing the beautiful people there, there's like extreme poverty, but so, so many happy people. Uh, it goes very colorful as India. It's uh, very interesting, a culture shock for me. Did it inspire you with the music to maybe write a few songs, which is what you saw? Do you know what the interesting thing is? I arrived in India and bought a flute for like three dollars, and I played the flute every day in every city that we visited in India, and people would stop on the street and just smile. And for me, that's the power of music. How a three dollar flute can bring crowds of people just to a standstill and smile. That's joy, bringing joy to the world. Oh my goodness, how beautiful. That is awesome. Now tell me a little bit about, I know you first of all are very proud of your daughter. Very now, proud awesome. of Zanina. She's been doing some great stuff. <laughs> She's very pretty, voice. pretty phenomenal. Now, um, tell me, how were you able to influence her music and her career? Well, I've been very fortunate. I've been in the music business like quite a few years, uh, <clears throat> over 20 years for sure, and played with many fine artists. Joe Cocker, Yosi Carreras, uh, Frank Sinatra, worked with Johnny Depp on uh, one of his scores for his movie. A lot of jazz background, but a lot of rhythm and blues. I was influenced by Ray Charles, Nat King Cole, uh, at the same time as the Rolling Stones. So I kind of put it all together and started to work with Lenina. So with all my different genres that I work in, I was able to uh, you know, bring Ladina's feeling into it and make a Ladina sound. No, no, and you um, you help her compose all of her songs in terms of uh, that's on her album. So most of the time we do. We sit together and we knock out a song, but sometimes she just comes in and knocks it out of the bag and says, Dad, I wrote this today, and it's like, whoa, let's record it. Now, now your music um, is currently on iTunes, is that right? Yes. And um, where can they, they can purchase it on iTunes, and are you going on tour or anything like that? Though? Um, that's definitely in the future. Mm -hmm. Right now I want to record a lot more songs also. I have so much... It's so just many, overflowing, huh? Yeah, I have so many things to say. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to say. Well, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> now, now, how many albums have you done so far? Um, I'm working on my first, this would be my first album. I've had some releases, some singles and things like that, but this would be my first official album coming out. And I'm super excited. It's called What If. What If? Now, now what, that's inspired by what? My song, What If. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so um, when you came up with the title, it was like, what if I had a cheeseburger? Or what if? The, what, what was the reason? There's uh, a lot of, yeah. Uh, it's, it's like very neutral, what if. Mm -hmm. And what if the song is one of my favorite songs on the album. I love that bluesy vibe that it has. I love it so much. It's like Motown. Yeah. You're the Motown. I love Motown. So mm -hmm. we put some Motown feeling in there. Right, exactly. You know, you're very inspiring to so many people, just having you on the show. Oh. Um, and then in a moment, they're going to hear you singing. And then it's really going to be inspiring more so in terms of that. But it's great because your reasoning on why you want to be in the industry is to help people. Yeah. A lot of people I've asked questions to just to make money. That's what I want to be in here for. But you know, if you, it's always this the saying that if you're doing what you love, you never feel like you're working. Yeah, exactly. And um, it sounds like you're just enjoying it and a purest of artists. Is that correct? I love it so much. Yeah. And I can throw this to I can throw this to Andrew because most of like he looks like he just enjoys what he does. <laughs> I do. I do. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I've always been in the, you know, in that, since I heard Night King Cole, it's like, how do I make this sound? It's like, always trying to find out how to make this, this beautiful, magical harmony. So, Andrew, who was the most fascinating person that you've ever had worked for? The most fascinating person that I've ever worked for? Oh, good heavens. Now, you had to include me in there because you just met me. <laughs> I'm just talking about, no, I'm just talking I guess uh, the most important, I don't know, I wouldn't know. That's, I don't know. But it's so many, isn't it? So many, so many. Because characters are in the music business. We've got so many characters in the music business. Um, so many beautiful people, each with the quirks. And sometimes, you know, you can get on the bad side. But, you know, most of the time, everybody's got such a beautiful heart. It's so nice. They really mean good at the end of the day. Sometimes you can get a little bit hairy fair when you're working on a you know, production. High profile stuff sometimes, you know. Oh, definitely. Like stress kind of is in there. But I'm not the stress type of person. I'm like, hey, 
Come on, let's just take it down and let's just chill. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, Andrew, we kind of gathered that. We're just watching. You just kind of relax, smooth, you know. So it's, I, I gather that in terms of that. Now, um, fans alike are always want to know this uh, once they hear your music. And you're here after this commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. As a matter of fact, she's going to close this out. But um, they can purchase your album on iTunes. But are you going to be performing anywhere live? Will you come out maybe in Los Angeles area or anywhere close by? Soon. I have a couple places. Lined up, but yeah, no, definitely soon. And I'll always keep you updated on all my social medias all the time, letting you know when the next time I'm performing. And I'm super excited every time I perform, every performance. Now, where can the fans be able to keep up with you um, on social media, your Facebook, Twitter, things like that? Oh, yeah, I have Instagram for my singing, Facebook, Twitter. Who can um, give it to them? Um, give them the ones that they can follow you. Um, and they give the ones for the stalkers so they can follow that one. <laughs> and just get it. But just give the ones for um, your fans as well. It'll appear on the screen. Right. So, yeah. So you can see all my social media uh, just by typing my name, Medina Spence. That's how I am on every page, on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter also. Um, yeah. And you could see all my content there and all the news and updates of new performances coming up and new things. She's going she's gonna to be something big, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen her here on the Gerard Show. She's going to blow up. I hope she knows me when I'm on Skid Row. I hope you know me. Just give me a big <laughs> order or something when you grow up. You can get there, okay? In terms of that, but really appreciate having you on the show. And when we come back, we're going to hear this beautiful voice. I'll be sure Sherrard will be right back right after this. <laughs> and without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Medina Spence singing What If. Hello, this is my song, What If? I get kind of lonely Pulling through the day Ever since you told me You're going away But what if life without you Ain't no compromise What if I can't handle living without you I'm not really ready for this these never ending lies what if I can't live with goodbye and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Gerard show I'm your host Gerard live on location at theater 68 in North Hollywood we just had a wonderful wonderful time with the lovely Ladina Spence did you hear that voice ladies and gentlemen if you missed it you can watch it on the playback that girl can jam and she's definitely going to be the next big thing so you definitely want to pay attention to her she's coming to a city near you and also um just keeping on with the show ladies and gentlemen as i promised this is a power packed show this saturday afternoon we have some of the biggest heavy hitters to my right is the son of the legendary lou rawls mr lou rawls jr has stopped by the sherrard show how are you this afternoon sir great, great. you might have dog on good to see you this Brook, Brooks Brothers coat he has on his jacket. This man is just down in the profile. Looking cleaner yeah. than a board of health, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, Lou, welcome to the show. How are you? And what have you been up to, sir? Uh, man, I just, uh, everything's great. Thank you for having me. Um, actually working on a project called The Sons of Soul. Actually, it's me, myself, David Ruffin Jr. Stab with David Ruffin with the Temptation. And Jackie Wilson's son, Bobby Wilson. And uh, we've also been included in this other show, similar to ours, called Sons of Soul Legends. And it's with Solomon Burke, his son, uh, Jim and I, uh, Joe Tech's son, and Johnny Taylor's son. Wow! Possibly Otis Redding's son. Is that right? Yeah, so we're trying to put that together. And uh, we have a show in Vegas in November, and then uh, I think we'll be going overseas after. So now you all on this um, tour that's coming up or this um, <coughs> performance that's coming up in Vegas, are you singing your songs? You're singing songs. We're doing that. Dad? We're doing. We're doing our dad stuff. Is that right? Well, I'm doing. Uh -huh. So I can't speak for the other guys, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty good at doing. You're doing your dad song. So you mean like songs like "You'll Never Find" and "Lady Love" and like that? Love, see when I get there, beauty people, dead in the street, tobacco road. Boy, you gonna be jamming. So so now. Natural man too. You got a grandma for that. Is that right? So what was it like growing up the son of a legendary uh, uh, singer such as we were? I know you get that I mean, act a thousand I mean, times, but what was it I like? I mean, my, it was interesting. You know, it was certainly very, um, 
I was very blessed and very fortunate to be able to travel with him and you know see some some different parts of the world and uh, it was very interesting you know people ask me that and it's like I, I my answer is this, I I don't know it's just what it was for me I don't have anything to compare it to <laughs> you know I have other parent you know kids that were parents were famous or that were um, you know, industry tycoons if you will you know had CEOs of companies I mean it's all it's it's at that level it's all the same mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's just, and how you uh, represent yourself and hope to you know be an upstanding representative of the family if you will and keep the legacy going mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's what I'm trying to do now now, did, now were you always um someone that wanted to be in the industry like your dad because a lot of times children grow up like especially when they see their dad as a preacher they say I don't want to be a preacher because they see what he went through was that how it was as well you know actually for me I, I played sports I went to uh, you know be on a football scholarship I took over at Cunningham and I was you know hoping to go pro route mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately I got hurt you know, like happens to many players in this uh you know wonderful sport and so um entertainment seemed like the next best thing. I mean, I've been singing since, you know, when I was younger in school. I've always picked out, you know, plays and things of that nature. And I never really knew Rob. I didn't know who he was until I was older. And now how much older? Um, like 18. Really? So you just saw him? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, we'd go out on the road, but I mean, I went on tour with him and it was a whole different experience. What was that like? Um, uh, mind blowing. You know, it's one thing to see, you know, like I said, he was my father, you know, and then to see him go out in front of thousands of people and just kill it, you know. And then, I mean, I've literally had people come up, walk in and start shaking, and, you know, wow, and, you know, uncontrollably. It's, 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 it's surreal, but I mean, it was, he was a great man and he did great things. And uh, like I said, I was hoping to continue. You know, one thing that's very interesting about this gentleman to my right also as well is that Sam Cooke was his godfather. So Sam Cooke loved this little boy so much when he was a little boy, he loved him to death. And um, Sam Cooke and Lou Rawls were best friends. So now tell me a little bit about um, what you remember about their friendship. Uh, you know, just, I have really one experience with him and it was unfortunately one of the last time that I saw him before he passed that I saw a memory of him. But, um, you know, based on what my dad was telling me, they were like brothers, and they were, you know, I mean, obviously he was one of the premier songwriter performers of, of ever, but certainly of that generation, of that era. And uh, unfortunately it was taken too soon, and that's a whole other conversation. That's, that's, a, whole, that's a whole different conversation. But, uh, but you know what thing that's interesting to me is um, that, you know, you being the son of a legend, but you're also a filmmaker, is that right? I have dabbled in the film industry. <laughs> um, I wrote a script uh, on my dad's life called Through the Eyes of the Sun, the overall story. So working on that, Isaiah Washington expressed interest in my dad, which was phenomenal. Um, but that's kind of... Uh, I'll play the butler. Yeah, you know, you know, we'll the butler. <laughs> hey, we can always work something out for sure. Um, but that's you know, right now, because I've got these other things going on right now, that, uh, it's not... I'd say put to the back burner. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. certainly something that we're going to get back to. But right now, I'm more focusing on you know what I'm trying to do right now to keep his name alive and the, and the legacy going. You know, my mom used to always have his music bumping through the um, house. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to always hear "You Will Never Find." And I like dong dong dong. You know, she just loved that, and she always I said, "Mom, why do you love that song so much?" She said, "Cause Lou is singing to me." You know, so it was just a, it was just a beautiful thing in terms of that. But how did you become friends um, with all of the sons of legends? Because we have uh, David Ruffin Jr. in the audience. Um, he's here, and he's going to be on our next commercial break when we come back. He's going to be here as well. And boy, does he look like his dad. But how in the world were you able to just like uh, attach yourself? Kind of common. I mean, I was, um, I was in a band with Marvin Gaye's son, actually, um, many years ago. And um, through that, we we all just, you know, through the course of time, through our parents, have paths have crossed either through on the road or, you know, a lot of us live here in LA. <coughs> Excuse me. And through Facebook and Twitter and these, you know, through this new social media situation, you know, we've all kind of, you know, just, just, yeah, just, you know, reached out to each other because I guess we have our own kind of little 
fraternity of understanding of what it's kind of like. I mean, it's, it's really hard to sometimes describe and define what it's like, mm -hmm. unless you are in that kind of situation. Yeah, and that's, that's absolutely correct. And there's a lot of pressure that comes with that as well. Uh, there might be, but I really don't look at it that way. I don't, I don't feel impressed because I'm not trying to be him. You know what I mean? They always say, you know, we're stepping into a great man's shoes and I'm trying to create my own. So that's kind of where I would like to be, like differentiate myself from that. Because, you know, that's, that's just my take on it. Maybe, like I said, I, I can understand that term in, in that context, but for me personally, I, you know, I'm just trying to be the Rawls Jr. <laughs> and for those who have just uh, tuned in to the Sherrard Show this Saturday afternoon, we are speaking to the son of the legendary uh, Lou Rawls, Mr. Lou Rawls Jr., the filmmaker, as well as uh, his performance that's coming up um, with many of the sons of the legends um, in Las Vegas. What's the date's November? November 30th in Las Vegas. Now, um, what's the ticket prices for that? Uh, get a theory? Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, How close do you want to get to the stage? I want to be right there. Well, that would be... Uh... Something you'll have to discuss. I only got three dollars and forty-seven cents in my pocket, so you might be at the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we're gonna have more with Mr. Lou Ross Jr. as well as Mr. David Ruffin Jr. when we come back right after this. <laughs> And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, live on location um, here at Theater 68, um, here in North Hollywood, California. Just talking to the wonderful Lou Rawls Jr. about his career, the things he has upcoming, and then the name mentioned. Does the name David Ruffin sound familiar to you, ladies and gentlemen? Well, that is not only the uh, one of the most sultry voices you've ever heard, um, as well as the prime voice of The Temptations. Well, I'm very honored today to have his son, sitting here um, with me as a guest on the Sherrard Show. Uh, Mr. David Ruffin Jr., how are you, sir? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing today, all right? All right, all right? Welcome to the show. Let's get a close up on this. Now, he looks just like his dad. Now, David, how have you been? Blessed and highly flavored. I mean, excuse me, highly flavored. Um, busy, a lot this year, put out a few records this year. And uh, making some plans for the end of the year. And 2020 is gonna be big. Now you are, are performing as well in Las Vegas um, with Lou over here in November, is that correct? I am. Now what are some of the songs you'll be performing? Will be performing your dad's songs or some of your own? I'll be performing, uh, it's, you know, it's basically a tribute to our father. So I'm going to stick to that lane, although I'm always all over the freeway, I'll stick to that lane on that particular night. Now um, what are some of the songs that of your dad's that's like your favorites that you're going to be singing? Uh, my favorite, I may or may not be singing, but my favorite is... Statue of a Fool. Oh, I love that song. Uh, my favorite uh, Temptation song would uh, probably be My Girl. Really? A universal favorite, I'm sure, for so many. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it the Statue of a Fool is one that you love so much? It just, I don't know, it just it just resonates closer to who, who I, what part of me is a part of him as a man. It wasn't my favorite growing up. So now talking to Lou um, on our previous com commercial break, now what was it like uh, growing up with such a legendary um, individual as being your dad? It was tough. Hmm. It was tough. Mm -hmm. um, if I was to be, you know, uh, an engineer or a football player or, uh, you know, a brick bricklayer, It'd probably be great and no problem, mm -hmm. just all perks. But because I am also an entertainer, uh, yeah, it could be tough. So um, everybody expect you to be just like your dad instead of being yourself. If that wasn't one of the reasons. Absolutely, some of the same things that we all go through. Mm -hmm. Who understands it mm -hmm. even more so? But it, he just recently adopted the whole idea of okay, I'll do it because he's always been in production. So mm -hmm. you know, it, it wasn't like a part of him that he didn't know, it's just a part of him he didn't really want to deal with. It It was more creativity, more money at the time, especially in just in just movies in general. And I, I too have made that transition into acting, but the music thing, you know, it it was a kind of a, I was a DJ first. I didn't sing. First I was a DJ and then I started dancing and then I started rapping. And, How did that go? Uh, 
it went pretty well, but I had two pretty uh, two pretty uh, heavy slaps in the face. The first one was uh, SBK Records trying to pull me away from my five man group called Fifth Chapter. I'm saying that yeah, we want to sign you, but uh, oh wow. That. And the other part was my father saying, I'm not backing you up on that crap. <laughs> but um, about a year you know, later after my father said that, I just I had become, I had changed what rap songs they went into, um, songs that I could sing. Now, what year was this that you were a rapper? Uh, I was rapping probably, I would say, 90. Mm -hmm. so, so rap was look quite, looked upon quite differently in the 90s mm -hmm. than it is now. Huh? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a rapper too. Like at Christmas time, I rap gifts. Tuck my you joke. Know, I mean, I'm telling you. Tuck my joke. I say that all the time. Rapper. He <laughs> asked me, do you rap? I say the same thing. Presents and gifts. <laughs> <laughs> you are you a rapper? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it at that. Yeah. But now, so what is the industry like? And I'll throw it to both of you all now. The industry back in your dad's day with the Motown and um, records and Sam, you know, being signed with Sam and things, yeah. like, and, and things like that. It's quite different, but I'll throw it to you first, Lou. What is the industry like now compared to back then? What there is no comparison. <laughs> there really is no comparison. But yet, the industry is a, a foundation, you know, interest in culture, in our culture and society at large. Um, it's something that, <laughs> Uh, will always be around, but through the advent of social media, you literally don't need to be signed to a major label. That is fascinating. Most people don't know that. Well, and today, you know, fortunately for some and unfortunately for others, but, um, you know, it's all about promotion, marketing, getting your face and your, your, your music material out to the world. So there's an audience out there for it. You just got to, you know, find it. Fascinating time. What about for you, I think? What would you say is the biggest difference with the industry back when your dad was touring all over the world and um, you know you you didn't have social media but now <coughs> social media and everybody you know want to be a superstar. The difference is the amount of work that's put in. Um, I'm sorry to all these successful producers out there. I don't mean to clown you because it's more based around the artist, but nowadays anybody can be a rapper. You know. And Anybody. And it's sad because um, even the R&B industry has been kind of picked apart and sub so much that, you know, you can't even really have a top 10 R&B artist list right now. Well, I mean, it's hard to come by. Um, it's a lot of the same. And a lot of that same, the, the, the blend is, okay, this is not enough of vulgarity in this rap song, so we'll turn this into an R&B song. And that's what I see a lot of. I think that it's just too easy for people to um, slide by what's supposed to be respectable music. And R&B, I mean, I make R&B, I used to rap, but even when I did rap, I really wasn't talking too much garbage. You know, I had my times, I've, you know, a lot of people heard me make music that I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't regret at all. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I've evolved since then, so my mindset might be different, but you know, uh, that song, Gin and Juice, that's me on that hook. I wrote I wrote that, I sang that. Um, Is I'm, that the one that, um, okay, wow, wow. So that's and, one of those. And, and the shiznit. Da, 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 we all know that one. Da, 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 yep. And uh, I, I was on a lot of music back then. And um, it's been, it's been, the same transition for me that it has been for some other artists, but they just didn't really have the bug anymore. I, I have the bug still, you know, so that's why I'm able to do this with him. That's why I put out four records, or at least, and been featured on two and put out two of my own this year. So the music is still in me, even though it's frustrating. The labels aren't what they used to be. You gotta look out for yourself, you know, unless you got $100,000 to, to put behind your promotions right out the gate, just stay enjoying the music. And that's the, that's the gauge that I've been in. I've been able to stay enjoying my music because I'm doing it because I want to. That's what awesome. I have. So what is it like for both of you all if you go into Sony Records and you say, here, I'm Lou Rollins Jr., I'm David Ruffin Jr. What is it like? We haven't tried that yet. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I had the story about that when Marvin and I were actually shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, Randy Jackson was senior, the guy from American Idol, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he was one of the senior VPs over there. And we walked in together, and he didn't even hear the music. He goes, you know you
don't stand a chance, don't you? <laughs> and I just now, did you know who you were then? Uh, of course, mm -hmm. of course. That's what he meant by that. Wow, wow. He meant, you know, you'll you never measure. Yo, you know, there's, there's just no way. And I, and I said to him, I go, you know, I'm not trying to be him. He's certainly not trying to be his father. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of just changed his perspective because there is a certain uh, public perception, right? That things should be a certain way. It may be, and then it could be possibly the entire other direction because it, it all goes back to conditioning and environment mm -hmm. and, and the way the person's raised and what they've been through and the experiences in their life. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a very, very interesting story. Now, were, were you um, of age or too young or so, or did you see your dad perform live? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, a long time. Um, I, I was fortunate not to be one of those offspring that didn't know their daddy. So I grew up with my father. Wow. And, um, and he was very you know, soft spoken. We had a. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. I thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do what I can and whenever I can. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, uh, my father, uh, he made me forget my question. <laughs> 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 uh, no, I mean, I, I know it's just weird. Um, <laughs> where was it? Yeah, you're, you're speaking yeah. about going to see me perform. Oh, yeah. I've seen my father perform. I was on the reunion tour. Uh, I, I helped my father prepare. I was ballet a couple times. Um, I watched him rehearse um, since I can remember being this big. Wow. Um, you know, uh, it's crazy. I have a lot of memories. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could you know, just show you. But well, we're very honored to have you on the show. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you. That's a beautiful thing. That's because of Lou that I'm here. Yeah, I appreciate that. Lou, you know, we've been trying to have Lou on the show for the last two years. Really? And he finally was able to make it on the show. Wow. He's such a busy man, you know, finally yes. finally got his flight scheduled and said, bring the plane over here in Noho. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate him stopping by and share our show. Now, um, when we come back, we also have a very special guest. Uh, this gentleman, Joe, who's um, here sitting in the audience, is going to come by as well. He has a very interesting story as well. And then also, are we going to be able to hear this little sample of what you all are going to have in Vegas? Uh, performing in Vegas, your uh, some one of your dad's songs as well as one of your dad's songs. Well, how about during the commercial? You check your wallet, and then we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard, we'll be right back. Right after. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, live on location at Theater 68. Having a wonderful time on this Saturday afternoon, uh, talking to some musical legends, son of legends, as well as Grammy Award-winning producers. I mean, wonderful, power-packed show. If you missed this episode, you can always watch it at WCOBM. TV, or as well as on my YouTube channel at The Sherrard Show. This is going to be such an awesome, awesome interview, as well as a great show. You definitely don't want to miss that. And this gentleman to my right is a surprise guest, a very special guest who I'm um, stopped by the show. Um, he is a son of a legendary sax player, and he's stopped by the show. Um, he's just here to a very humble gentleman just to talk about what he's been up to, what he has planned, and then his story. Mr. Joseph Charles uh, Newton, mm -hmm. welcome to The Sherrard Show. How are you, sir? Thank you for having me. That's a pretty awesome shirt. Get a shot of that shirt, man. That man is styling and profile. What are you trying to pull on this Saturday afternoon? I'm just trying man. to stay ready. He clean, man. He clean. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Archie. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good. Now, now tell everybody um, a little bit about you. Well, uh, like, like you said, I'm, I'm the son of a legend. My dad, Charles Miller, original band member of Group War, uh, Low Rider. You know, why can't we be friends? Think of that mile. But, you know, I was just the kid that grew up uh, here in the Valley, um, you know, educated in school. And like I was telling you off camera, uh, David and Lou, they were always busy. They was, you know, doing their thing. You've you know? known them for a long time? Well, yeah, um, I'm younger than them. Um, so I, I grew up with Gordy. So me and George Gordy were best friends, and um, we were just little kids running around. Um, but at the same time, I was running music, you know, in school. Um, as it evolved and watching, watching them do their thing, I eventually, you know, started taking music a little bit more serious. I've always been a hip-hop b-boy. I was a break dancer. You know, but, break dancer, really? Yeah. Oh. But I just took music real serious when I saw that, you know, how they were being successful at that time in the 90s. And then um, now it just evolved to, to today, today where I'm able to record, um, hopefully um, add today's sound, you know, to the sounds of, 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 of back when our dads were, were, were doing it and make a beautiful sound. 
Now, um, you're still enjoying doing what you do in terms of making beautiful music? Absolutely, every day. Now, what genre do you prefer um, in terms of you making music? What genre do I prefer? Yes. Uh, I don't have a, 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 a genre per se. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's energy. Um, energy um, is what really affects my music and the music around me. Um, and also, too, um, I would say a genre would be, you know, R&B, obviously. Um, we stick to our roots, but we don't, we don't want to close ourselves in. No, no, no. As a matter of yeah. fact, and um, some of the greatest artists love all music. Absolutely. In order to um, just put that great sound together. But people don't realize that the longest running genre of music is rap. Rap music is still the longest running of, of all the music. And people a lot of times don't even realize that, that disco only lasted a few years. Absolutely. It yeah. wasn't long at all. Rap was something that was a phenomenon. Um, it was something that, that they thought would, would just disappear uh, until you know it came into the, to the urban home. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, you, you talked about the difference between music back then and today. I mean, back then it was talent. It took a lot of hard work, like they said, and talent. Um, and, and great writing, it, you know, it took a unit. Now it's, 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 it's all about antics or about, you know. It's Tell about me about music. it. It's, it's not about the talent anymore. So. Tell me about it. You know, um, you look at like the Temptations, um, the, you know, David Ruffin, they had, they, they were singing about something really good and then they had them dance routines down. Down. I man. mean, they were tight. You look back at Dave, David Ruffin when he'd sing and he'd come and slide up in and, 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 and you just felt it. And then when he hit his notes, I mean, and everything was, so tight in pocket, it looked like they didn't even practice. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm but, telling you. you know, that was just what they did every day, every day, every day. And you could tell them the music and the, and the feel of it. So we want to bring that out. That's, that's my vision. Sons of Legends brings that sound back and invigorates a whole new genre of music. So you're going to be performing as well in November? Uh, no, not in November, not this mm -hmm. time soon, but um, down the line eventually. Uh, right now I'm just recording. One thing that's fascinating that I really want to, and, I, and we'll just leave it at this, but I really want to see come back is the doo-wop. I'm so surprised that doo-wop has not come back yet. You know, Motown just put it in the ground and it stayed buried, but it seems like um, I'm surprised that doo-wop, guys sitting on the corner just singing to the girls and doo-wop and hasn't come back, aren't you? Well, doo-wop doo is, 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 is kind of a derivative of mumble rap. Or, or, they call them, that's how you come up with your energy and your vibes. You do up, you do up on the balcony, you do up on the corner, or you know, I mean, and then then you make the song. Interesting, right? Yeah. So, so you come up with something that feels good, and then it's kind of do up. Right? But we can all agree that music is a universal language. Right? Absolutely, right? it's a it's a heck of a language that I don't care what color, what religion, or creed you are, you can always relate to some good music. Right? right, Joe. Thanks so much for stopping by the right. show. We really appreciate that. Um, this gentleman stopping by the show, and not just him, all of those who came by the Sherrard show, in terms of Ladina Spence, uh, her dad, Andrew, Mr. Lou Rawls Jr., David Ruffin Jr., as well as uh, Joe Newton stopping by the show, and then me, your host. And ladies and gentlemen, when we come back on our next episode of the Sherrard show, we're going to have Cardi B stop by the show, as well as Mr. Lorenz Tate. You don't want to miss this episode. I'm Sherrard. Follow me on my Facebook at The Sherrard Show as well as the YouTube channel, The Sherrard Show. Enjoy your weekend. Go Cubs. See you next episode.